In today's video, what I'm going to be talking about is going to be one of the major errors that most traders make at the beginning of their journey. Throughout this entire video, I'm going to be walking you through a couple of examples how you can prevent these major errors that you might be making as a beginner trader that just started their trading journey, or you might be already making these mistakes consecutively throughout your knowledge journey. The thing that I'm referring to is the fact that many people jump into their execution time frame way too quickly. And what I mean by that is that many people are purely focused more on, let's say, entry patterns and kind of doing that pattern recognition with their entry models rather than building up a whole context and narrative to their trading. So let's dive right into the charts and I'll be going through my step-by-step -step guide on how you can build a better context, which is going to help you become a better trader overall. See you there. Context. And what does it mean to have context on your charts as a trader? Many traders, when they start their trading journey, get overly excited about the lower time frames, about execution models, and about entering the market as much as possible without really looking at the bigger picture and realizing what the market is planning to do. The big difference between a potential beginner trader that you might be that is watching this video and an experienced trader is the fact that experienced traders do not try to predict the market. They react to what the market gives them. Whereas a beginner trader will let their emotions, will let their dopamine take over when they see the slightest check of their trading plan occur on the lower time frames. So my goal for this video is to showcase you guys the concepts of context. This is going to help elaborate your decision making and give you that clarity on what is happening on the bigger scheme of things. It allows you to take a step back from your execution time frame, and it allows you to then kind of look, breathe, get that weight off your shoulders, get that itchy finger syndrome away from your keyboard and then make more rational based decisions. The reason for this is because many beginning traders lack clarity because they're so zoomed in and dialed in on that lower time frame execution, ignoring everything that has been happening prior to their day that they're trading or their session that they're trading, not looking at order flow, not looking at liquidity concepts and for sure just not looking at the higher time frame trend that is building upon its way whether or not you are a pro trend trader or a counter trend trader giving context and labeling your playing field on the market will give you an extra edge upon your day-to-day -day activities on the market so let's go straight into it what I kind of do with my students as well within AO and uh, pretty much within uh, my own community is that we begin our learning with liquidity and I ask them this simple three question rule book, right? Where is price now? Where did price come from? And where is price going to? And you might be scratching your head a little bit now and asking like, okay, well, if only I had the answer to all these questions, I would already be in deep, deep profits. Sure. But we don't have the answer to all these questions. What this gives us is this context of what we want to see based off of, let's say, our execution models and everything along those lines. So where is price now? Right. In this case, we're on a Monday, um, low probability day, to say the least. And we are low. Right. Price is considered to be low at this area. Looking at everything prior to that, we also see where did price come from? right price is in this bearish order flow where we have respected these two liquidity continuation plays we have respected these two liquidity continuation plays going back to where price is now understand that price is considered relatively cheap right we want to be looking at price in an asset that it actually is an exchange between two currencies 
euro versus the dollar in this case, EU. The exchange is considered relatively cheap in context of everything that we see on our charts. And that is something that I want to get into uh, in a second where we want to make our charts a little bit more efficient and your annotation process a little bit more accurate. But overall, price is considered cheap. You can compare it to where did price come from on this context, on this, uh, you know, these highs, pretty much, we can see that we are lower than we were here, right? Not rocket science. I want you to really understand this in very basic mannerism before we dive into deep technicals with this channel and go into, let's say, more advanced techniques before I showcase you guys heavy entry models and all that good stuff. So context. What is the context here? We want to kind of pinpoint where we are on this map. This map being our uh, X axes and our Y axis. Y obviously in this case being the price that we have and the X axis being the time, right? This is not no time and price type of bullshit. This is just blatantly the information that we are given when we are trading an asset and especially a currency as an asset as well. So. We are considered to be, if this was our axes, we are obviously low on, you know, the Y axis, right? In comparison to this. And, you know, we know where we are at the moment in comparison to where we were, right? So most likely that kind of funnels us into this automatic wiring. It helps us wire our brain into automatically building this intuition, which is going to help you build a better narration. I see so many traders do that wrong. They don't look at the higher time frames. They don't look, they don't create this context. They don't create this narrative for themselves. And that's where you're going wrong. You're going wrong because you saw this dude doing these crazy entry models and you replicate that because you're just recognizing patterns. You're playing like memory with your own chart and his chart, you know, it's not how it works. Build context, learn to understand where you are in the trenches of these candlesticks. And then from there, you will automatically start building and honing that expert intuition the more you start repeating these three questions to yourself. And you're not going to be right the whole time. But again, we are not here to predict the market. We are here to react to what the market gives us. So Let's take this example for us and kind of I've pre annotated just the basics on this chart, right? We see bearish order flow. This bearish order flow, you can see that when we have these bullish candles, that they are considered to be transactable. Important term, note that down. Not that many people in the space use that. So I'm going to give you that definition in a way that you can understand my lingo and the way that I understand the charts so that you can better understand my explanations. Transactable is a state of liquidity. Liquidity, when it comes to an asset, entails how easy it is for that asset to be transacted. All in all, what it comes down to is we have two states that price can be transacting. E-liquid price action or liquid price action. E-liquid price action is when, is when it's very one-sided, right? Liquid price action is when it's very transactable. It just means that there are lots of market making capable participants and not some fugazi algorithm, but lots of market making capable participants transacting at that level. They're content with price, right? In that sense. That's kind of what we see here. Then price goes to an e-liquid state of delivery. It leaves behind what you guys call FEGs, imbalances, displacements, all in all the same thing. An area of price where it's very one-sided on this time frame. From there, it's respected. No body closes above. An inducement of our distal line, body close under midpoints. So far, good reaction, right? We create a low kind of distribute from that come back, liquidity grab on that. We have intent here, but overall we go back lower and lower and lower consecutively creating and fueling this bearish order flow. So far, so good, right? Coming back to where currently prices. So these type of things understand the print that's happening. It's not rocket science. And I really want you guys to spend more time. It's a craft. It's an art. 
right? It is not something that happens overnight. You know, those repetitions matter. And this narration, this internal monologue that you're going to be doing is going to be the make or break thing that will slowly add up once you put enough time in it. So where is price now? Right here, right? Where did price come from? All the way from the top. We are respecting bearish order flow. We are inducing weak lows over and over again. These are weak lows. Look, oh, you could probably argue that this was some sort of bull trap with your terminology and entry models. But overall, the context was and is bearish. So that kind of funnels us to the last most important question where we have that hint of speculation, but we are reacting to what the market gives us. And that is where is price going to go to? Where is price going to? Most likely, you've already answered it. And you've said, ah, price is going to go lower. And that's good. That's great. Why? Because it's, it's, it's not rocket science, right? It's not. You understand with this monologue that I'm giving you and the monologue you should be doing yourself as well as some sort of like predefined checklist before opening up your charts on a Monday or doing your start of week on a Sunday. This checklist, these three questions, right? It's, it's not that difficult in my opinion. From there, we understand, hey, price is most likely going to go lower, right? And that's kind of what we see as well. We see that price then goes lower. So this was the Monday session. We analyzed this with our group. We sent the analysis prior to this, and we had this low as our target for the day. All in all, what happened? We built that context. We understood where price was, where we're taking liquidity, and what can you see? To no surprise, you will see exactly that. So very, very neatly done. Building context is the key to bringing that first step of confidence in your trading skills. Very simply done, right? What did we see? Um, H1, our middleman time frame, right? We had that low liquidity uh, right here, low resistive liquidity run right here. Um, price deviated above that midpoint of this void, right? That was left behind. And then went for our main draw on liquidity, sell side liquidity, uh, which was at 108.111 price level. So all in all, I hope that that makes sense. That gives a little introduction on uh, what I do on a day-to-day -day basis, what my students do on a day-to-day -day basis as well, and kind of giving you guys uh, that more intricate understanding of how to build context because that is the biggest mistake that beginning traders do is they jump way too quickly on the lower time frames um, without realizing you know what what's going on and will fail to understand what is actually happening on the higher time frames and fail to build that narrative fail to build that context that is oh so important so from there i hope you guys uh enjoyed this little quick video um it's going to be one of the stepping stones to more intricate concepts and understandings on this channel. And I will see you guys on the next one. Take it easy.